Something that always grabs attention is when you combine 2D design with 3D elements. In this video, you will learn how to import and animate 3D models directly inside After Effects. But we are not stopping there. We will also make sure that it looks great. And I will share some clever ways to create 3D models without ever touching specialized 3D software. Let's get started. We are in After Effects and I'm going to start by importing some 3D models. Now it is super simple to add 3D models inside of After Effects. The only important thing is to have actually the correct models. So I'm going to use GLB models in this case and I'm going to simply drag and drop them right inside of the project window right over here. Now don't worry, I'm also going to actually show you how I did these exact models. Now let's just drag and drop these inside of our composition and we're going to be prompted to set the scale of these. I'm fine with this, so I'm simply going to click on OK for all of these. And now we have five different rocks right inside of my project window right in here. And if I just hide everything and show one in here, I can see one of the models right over there. As you can see, it's quite detailed. I'm going to now reposition these around my scene to build up this field of asteroids. So let's push this a little bit back, somewhere like that, and push that around there. And we can also rotate it like that and so on. Now, what I suggest is actually to switch from active camera view to the top view. That way you can see all the models in here. Let's show them all in here. And now I can simply pick these rocks and just move them around. You can select the middle in here until X, Y, Z is seen in there and then just move them around like that. And that one and this one we're going to move right over there. We just need them to be totally random. Let's now switch back to the active camera. Now, of course, some of them we cannot see. So I'm actually going to pick the dolly tool from here and I'm going to scrub back to put them all into my field, fit up to 100%, and now I can continue to play with this to set up my scene perfectly. So hit V on your keyboard and set that up right over there. This one, I'm going to set that somewhere around here. And this one, I would like to be somewhere around here. This one, somewhere around there is good. This one, let's pick the middle and set that right there. Of course, the scale now is all the same, so I'm just going to adjust that as well. Press S for scale. Scale that a little bit up. Now this one, I'm going to scale that up as well. And this one, I'm going to scale way up, somewhere like that, and bring that even closer to my camera. I can rotate this. So let's rotate the orientation and continue basically to play with this until you get what you like. Now, apart from these main big rocks, I also want some smaller rocks. So to do that, I'm simply going to pick these same rocks in here, duplicate them and press S for scale and then scale them down and reposition them somewhere else inside of the scene. And to make them look more random, we can hit R and then rotate that however we like, just like that. And then we can even create much smaller ones, duplicate, hit S for scale and make that much smaller. And you can position it somewhere like that. There we go. We have even like smaller rocks right over there. Of course, this doesn't look like much right now, but we're going to continue tweaking this. So the first thing that I need to do is actually add a background to put this thing all together. I'm going to go to layer, new, and we're going to go to solid. Now we're going to rename this to BG for background. Click OK. And let's position that at the end. And I'm going to bring in a gradient. So let's bring in a gradient ramp drag and drop that right over the background. I would like to have this swapped, so I'm going to swap colors. So the brightest part would be on top and I'm going to change this color to be like this dimmed gray. This is looking quite good already, but of course we need to create some more interest by creating some nice deep shadows. So now I'm going to add some light. So let's go to layer, new, light. And from here, we're going to choose spotlight. Simply press OK. Perfect. So I have my spotlight. I'm going to move that all the way to the corner. And then I'm going to open this up, I'm going to transform, and I'm going to go to the point of interest and I'm going to right click and click on reset. And this would position the point of interest exactly at the center right over here. Right now I cannot see anything. That's because we have to tweak some settings. Let's go inside of the light options in here. We're going to increase the fall of distance quite high. So let's say like 20,000. And there we go. Now we have that light on all the rocks in there. And I would like to include this rock as well. So I'm simply going to increase the cone angle in here. And as you can see now, I have like some glimpses of that right over there. And of course we can rotate it and reposition it at a different place if we would like. So I can move that just a bit back in there. And now you can see that it's inside of this spotlight right over there. Perfect. So I like how this is looking. 
And the great thing about spotlights is actually that it doesn't put light equally everywhere. And in this case, this creates this nice cinematic look over my rocks. This already looks quite good, it looks quite cinematic, but of course it's not animated yet. So let's start animating it. To animate it, I'm actually going to create an animation rig, which will help me to animate everything evenly inside of the scene. But before that, I would like to humbly ask you if you can simply like, subscribe and even comment below. This would really help me to reach more people and be able to do more videos like this one. So let's start animating it now. We are going to start by adding a null layer. So layer and new and null object. And we're going to rename this to camera control. Now we are going to add a new camera. So layer, new and camera. And we're going to use a 20 millimeter camera. Press OK, and now we're going to simply parent that camera to the camera control right over there. Make sure that the camera control is set to 3D, and now we can use this camera control to animate our camera. So first of all, I can move it around. So as you can see, I can move it like that using the camera control. But more importantly, what I can do is I actually can press scale. So S for scale for camera control, and I can pull it back using the scale of this camera control null layer. So let's animate this using this. So I'm going to toggle the stopwatch. I'm going to start from 1% and then move around a few seconds, somewhere around here maybe. And we're going to pull it all the way back right over there. Now I can go to the graph editor. I'm going to press F9 on this keyframe, pick the other keyframe, press F9 as well. And we're going to pull the first handle all the way in, in here and the last handle in here all the way in as well. That way it starts super fast and ends slowly like that. So let's preview this. And you can see our first animation right there happening and it looks quite good. Now I actually would like to pull this back in. So I'm actually going to animate this back in to somewhere around here. And that looks great. I'm going to play a little bit with these keyframes so that everything is nice. So I'm going to pull that keyframe like that and pull the end keyframe like that. So now if I play that, we can see that this kind of stops right over here at the four second mark. And then this goes back in like that. Place this last keyframe a, a little bit more forward like that. Great, so I like the camera movement. One last thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this camera. So I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and we're going to put a keyframe on the Z axis. So let's pick the Z rotation in there. I'm going to hit U again and place that keyframe right in the center in here. And then we're going to go at the start from here and we're going to rotate it like that. Now, as we zoom out, it rotates like that. So now let's pick that last keyframe in there, hit F9 on my keyboard and pull that in. Let's pull the first one in as well. Wonderful. So this looks quite good. And now what we need to do is actually to animate the individual rocks. But before we do that, I'm actually going to show you how we can create one of these rock models. And we are actually going to do that using AI, more specifically Meshi.ai, who are actually our sponsor for today. So you don't really need external 3D software for this. We are going to use AI to create these 3D models. I am inside of Meshi.ai and I'm in its workspace. I'm actually using the image to 3D feature and I'm going to start by adding an image of a rock. This is a quick PNG image of a rock. You can use any image in here. Once you have that loaded up in there, you can simply select the model that you would like to use. So in this case, I'm going to use Meshi 6 Preview and I'm going to click on Generate. And as you can see, it has started generating my model right over here. It will take around one minute to generate your model. So there we go. The model has been generated and we can view it right over here. It is quite astonishing that it has managed to create this level of detail just by a single image in here. To texture this, I can click on it, click over here and click on texture. Then if you go to this panel right over here, it can use the same image input to texture it in here. We can click on texture and there we go. It's done. We can click on that and have a look at it. And as you can see, it has textured it for us. And we can even play with the environment settings in here. So we can do something like auto rotate to see how this would look in different environments. And the great thing is that you can start using this for free. You can find all the links in the description below. We are back in After Effects. Now let's start animating these rocks. Now we can animate these rocks individually, but a faster way to do that would actually to animate them all together. So we are going to go to create a new null object layer, new and null object to rename this to rocks control. We're going to turn that to 3D and now we can pick all of these rocks. 
and just parent them with that rocks control. So what I would like to do is actually when I'm zooming out of these rocks, I would like them to like come closer to the camera as if they are like exploding out. Now with this rocks control selected, press S for scale. I'm going to go to the start right over here and I'm going to give that a value of around 80%, toggle the stopwatch, and now go to the end and I'm going to give it a value somewhere around 200%. We can even go on the R for rotation, keyframe the orientation, go to the start, keyframe that, and then go to the end and we can rotate these slightly like that just to introduce a bit of randomness like that. And that looks quite good, but I would like to add more randomness over these. So I'm also going to animate them individually. So I'm going to pick all of these rocks. We're going to animate the rotation. So hit R on your keyboard and choose a keyframe right over there. Go to the very end in here and give it a different rotation, just like that. And now, as you can see, this gives it this subtle rotation animation that really makes this more convincing. So this looks quite good, but to make it look even more convincing, I'm actually going to add some more random animation. And to do that, I'm actually going to pick one of these rocks right over here. So that would be this one. I'm going to hit P right over here, and I'm going to put a position animation in here. Position keyframe, go to the very end in here. So let's see where the last keyframe is. It's right over there. And I'm simply going to pull this out like that. So this way, some of the rocks would have like different animation happening right over them. And I'm also going to give that a different like orientation in there so that it's even more convincing. Now I am quite happy with how this asteroid field looks and the next thing would be to actually add the 3D glass. So in this case I have already made this 3D glass and I'm just going to drag and drop this whole composition inside of this composition. I'm going to click on the continuous rasterize button right there and that would allow this composition to use all the lights and camera properties of this composition that we are using in here. I'm actually not going to show how you can create these 3D glass interfaces in this video. That's because I have made numerous videos in the past showing how to do this. So if you are interested in that, simply watch this video that actually shows how to create 3D glass panels as well as 3D interactions and UI interactions inside of After Effects. However, I am actually going to focus on making this whole thing look even more cinematic. So let's focus on that. And by the way, right inside of this glass panel right over here, you can find a glimpse of my new website, neuronfx.com. Now that we have reached over 50,000 subscribers, I am actually doing a whole redesign of this website. So just head over to neuronfx.com, where you will find very useful motion design products, like for instance, character animation tools and so on. And I'm also creating a whole page just for After Effects tutorials, so hopefully this would really help you in your motion design journey. With that said, let's jump back into After Effects and make this whole scene even more cinematic. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some additional lights as I'm seeing that this website field, this glass in here is a bit too dark. Layer, new and create a light. And this time I'm going to select a point light, press OK, and then I'm going to move this around in here, hit V in here and move that around to lighten up this box right over there. Hit P on your keyboard. I'm going to drag this Z position a bit out like that. I'm going to hit U and U on my keyboard to show the fall of distance. And I'm going to increase that just a little bit like that. Now let's go and hit T on my keyboard to go to intensity. And I'm going to drop that to around 50%. Now another light, I'm going to duplicate this command D and we're going to place that now on the other edge, but at the bottom. And now if I have a quick look at this, you can see how that would look like on the whole glass. This looks quite good. And now one final thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some cinematic lights to actually bring this all together. So I'm going to pick all of these. So pick all of these layers, except from the background, and I'm going to pre-compose. So right click, and then click on pre-compose. I'm going to rename this to 3D master scene. Click OK, make sure that move all attributes into new composition is set to on, click OK. And there we go, now we have this scene, but without a background. And if I go to the main 3D comp, the one that we were working before, we can see the background right over there. So everything now is organized inside of the scene. Now I'm going to add a new layer. So we're going to go to layer, new and solid. And we're going to rename this to cinematic light. And over this, we're going to add a fractal noise. So let's bring in a fractal noise effect, drag and drop it right over cinematic light. 
For this one, I'm going to increase the contrast in here quite up or increase a little bit the brightness in here, somewhere like that. Perfect. And then we're going to go to transform and we're going to increase the scale all the way up somewhere around here. Perfect. So this is what I am looking for. Bring in a directional blur effect. So just drag and drop that right under the fractal noise. Then we're going to align it somewhere like that. And we are going to increase the blur length to be quite high. 800, press OK, and that's good. Now let's solo this for a second. And I'm going to animate this. So to animate this, it's very simple. I'm going to go to the evolution right over here. And I'm going to hold Alt on my keyboard and click on evolution. And in here, I'm going to type in time times 50. So this is a very simple expression where it's taking the time value in here that changes and it's multiplying by 50. So now we have this very simple animation right over here. With this done, we're going to unsolo it once again and we are going to tie this. So we're going to pick the track mat and tie this to the 3D master scene. This way it only shows over that 3D master scene. Let's bring back the 3D master scene like that. Now, of course, this looks very odd. That's because we need to pick the cinematic light in here, go to mode and select something like multiply. And like that, we have this subtle shadows effect. And if I zoom up a little bit in here, I can see this more properly. So if I remove that, it looks like this. But if I bring it back, we have these nice shadows right over our scene. And now to bring the brightness back up, we're going to create a new layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. And we are simply going to bring in a curves effect drag and drop that over that adjustment layer. And now we can pull back the brightness, but I'm going to leave the shadows where they are so that we still retain that nice shadows right over there. And this is how everything looks when combined together. Perfect, so we are actually done. Of course, what is left to do is actually to add that 3D glass pointer. So once again, if you would like to know more on how to create 3D glass in After Effects, I'm going to leave some links in the description to other videos that I have made that actually show exactly that.